Welcome to this short look at how to use breakout sessions in Microsoft Teams. My name is Christopher Duncan with CDA Computer Training and I think you'll be happy to see just how easy it is to create breakout sessions in Teams. In addition, I want to show you an extra trick on how to incorporate a whiteboard collaboration tool like Mural into the breakout sessions. Our assumptions for today's class are that you, one, already have a team created in Microsoft Teams, two, can create channels and meetings in Teams, and three, have signed up for an account at Mural.co. Step one, getting Teams ready. The first thing to do is open Microsoft Teams and then create channels for all of your breakout sessions. The secret to creating primary and breakout sessions in Teams is to hold your meetings inside of the channels. Caution, this does require that you have invited all attendees to become members of your team. In my example today, I have a team named CDA Computer Training, and there is a general channel, as well as a blue breakout and a red breakout channel. Before I forge ahead, I do want to recommend that you use descriptive names for the breakout channels. It will help members find their way around and is more memorable than using names like Breakout A and Breakout B. Step 2. The Meeting Invitation Be certain you create the meeting invitation from within Teams and not within Outlook. By using Teams to create the invitation, you can localize it to the general channel of your training team. Step three, using Mural inside of Teams. There are many whiteboard solutions on the market, but Mural has a great intuitive interface that you can use for any kind of activity. I have previously created a Mural with three sections for our training, group results, red team breakout, and blue team breakout. Our goal is to copy a link to each breakout in Mural and create a tab out of it on the breakout in Teams. The steps are quite easy. Right click on the Mural framework that I want the tab to link to. Two, choose link to this framework from the dropdown. Three, right click and copy the link address. Four, go back into Microsoft Teams. Click the channel where I want the tab to appear. Six, click the plus sign to add a tab to the channel. Seven, choose website as the type of tab. Eight, name the tab. And paste the link. Nine, click save. Step four, before the meeting begins. The key to using breakouts in Teams is to start several meetings before all of your attendees join you. You're probably familiar with joining a meeting in Teams, but a lot of people just don't realize that you can have multiple Teams meetings running at the same time. At this time, one person can have a maximum of four meetings running at a time. When you're ready to set up your training environment, follow these quick steps. Double-click the Teams meeting in your team calendar. Click Join in the Meeting Details window. Click Join Now. Click the Teams button on your left-hand side. Click the first breakout group. Click the Meet Now button beneath the chat field. Click Meet Now. You are now in two meetings. Step 5. Switching back and forth between the primary and breakout sessions. If you don't see the breakout session, press the control key on your keyboard to bring up the hold button on the left and your meeting control bar at the bottom. When you join the second meeting in the previous section, you effectively put the primary session on hold. In fact, you'll see a floating box with the name of the primary session and two buttons in it near the upper left-hand corner. To return to the primary screen, click the play button 
on the floating hole box. You'll see that you have returned to the primary meeting but still have a floating hold box. That floating hold box now has the name of the breakout session in it. Step 6. Asking participants to join a breakout. When it comes time to ask participants to join a breakout session, the steps are quite easy. Almost the same as in step 4 but with one difference. Ask the participants to click on the Teams button on the left hand side. Next, they should click on the breakout channel to which they have been assigned. Finally, a participant will click in the join button in the middle of the post tab of the breakout channel to which they were assigned. Remember, as soon as they clicked on that join button, they won't be able to hear you any longer until you switch over to that breakout session. One issue has come up repeatedly when trying to help newcomers move back and forth between sessions make sure that they don't click the end call button. Also, it helps to remind them that they won't see a floating box for the session they are currently in. You only see the floating hold box for sessions you have joined but are not currently in. Step 8. Facilitating a Teams meeting with breakout sessions. Most of your users will only have one primary and one breakout session open at a time, which can make their life easy. Just remember, however, that as a facilitator, you will need to jump between breakout sessions. That's another great reason to give meaningful names to your meeting and breakout sessions. If you're working with a large group, it can be very helpful to have assistant facilitators and technical assistants in the meeting with you to help keep things moving. I also like to assign mentors to each breakout group, people that I have prepped before the meeting with skills to keep an exercise on track if a facilitator is not immediately available. I've created a to-do list for facilitators that assumes you'll be working with a team to facilitate a larger meeting or retreat. Please feel free to try it out and let me know how your meeting goes. Until we meet again, I'm Christopher Duncan with CDA Computer Training. Stay safe and stay healthy.